As you look at the stories in the annual report, keep in mind one of the honors and privileges of medicine is that if you look at a story of someone with disease or injury, you change just one word and that story is about you. We are doing this for people who are in need of help right away, but we are really doing this for anyone. When I look at where medicine is going, and we are part of that glorious journey, I think about how we do medicine. There are at least three things that help us. The first one is that we have been able to lift on the shoulders of giants that preceded us and that understood that you cannot do much in medicine unless you can see what's invisible. You cannot see a cell. You cannot see how the brain is wired. You don't see how fluids are moving from one organ to another. But you can apply science to that question and you can actually answer that question. And when I think about science, I don't think of this as a, as a big book. What I think about is how you go about creating that new knowledge. We are determined optimists. We know that we work with our singular talent, which is alleviation of human suffering. We work on this every day. And this determined optimism combined with the science itself is where we start. And the third plank of the how, there are no lone agents anymore. There have never been, but history looks that way. Everything happens in teams. And that communal knowledge, that, that ability to share ideas with each other, that ability to develop something that has not existed before and would never be able to be developed in a single brain comes confidence and competence, and I would argue courage to do things that have not been done before. And that's the power of science, that we always build upon what we had before. We are never definitive. Now, Minnesota, it's a beautiful country, land of 10,000 lakes, but it is also the land where phenomenal things have happened in the history. And the thing is that as we go about our daily jobs in basic science, in clinical care, in education, we are changing that legacy by adding to it. And as evidence of that, you have the Institute for Developing Brain. You have, for the first time in history of medicine, we have been able to figure out how to put together the elements that will harness the potential of developing brain in the first 1,000 days of life and prevent almost inevitable consequences of that early childhood injury and misalignment of opportunities that will then become reality 30 years after. If I tell you that we are probably the only place that has a vaccine that is useful in addiction. If I tell you that we are looking at the upstream of healthcare by turning away from a healthcare and medicine that's focused on sickness today to focusing on health, that all is part of that legacy. Each one of us is earning our place every day. This is what we are doing today. This is what we are capable of as a team, if we can bridge this gap and aim to be the best version of what we can be as a medical school, as a practice, as a place where people of the state focusing their hopes when, when they need them, we are on the right track. The future of medicine is how.